Join us for a review of the new Jeep Compass plug-in hybrid. Let's go! So the official naming is Jeep Compass 4XE. This 4XE is the naming for their new plug-in hybrid models. And you can see they have some blue accentuations, for example here the Jeep logo and also the sides and so on. And we also have a blue vehicle color here for today. It's called Blue Shade. Very nice one indeed with blue shades. You get bi-xenon headlamps starting from the limited trim level. You also can see it right here. We have the Trailhawk for you here today with these off-road accentuations here and also the approaching and descending angles are of course better than with the Trailhawk version. The length is at 4 meters 40, 14 foot 4 or 173 inches, so a compact SUV. Since we have the Trailhawk version here, we have this trail rated batch 4x4 and also not too big wheels, 17 inch and with more tire left. Also here has been prepared with these tire spray that they look a little bit cooler in the typical Trailhawk, you know, off-road stylish wheels. I mean the real off-road wheels would be even more basic maybe, but this is how somehow combines the look. Also, of course, the crossover wheel arches. And then in the plug-in hybrid version, we have here the Compass logo, again, framed by this blue look. In the rear, we once again see a modern signature right here and the 4XE logo for the PHEV. And once again, the blue Jeep logo accentuation. I think it fits very well, even here in this blue color. It looks really, you know, that it would be aligned for this vehicle. Really nice. And typical Trailhawk features also that you have the the hook right here, of course, not for being pulled out yourself, but you pull out some other vehicles, right? As for engines, US starts with a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine with 180 horsepower. That's the main Compass engine. In Europe, we get the 1.3 liter turbo petrol engine with 130 or 150 horsepower. And this is also the base then for the plug in hybrid version. 1.3 liter turbo petrol engine powering the front wheels plus electric drive on the rear wheels and then here for the PF versions either 190 or 240 horsepower the latter one we have here today and 7.3 seconds is then the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour so already quite powerful so the battery is 11.4 kilowatt hours and charging works AC 3 kilowatt or optional 7.4 then and this gives you a pure electric range of yeah, around 40 kilometers or 25 miles, something like that. Very round and thick Jeep steering wheel as we used to. Left side here to control the digital instruments, right side for the cruise control. Seats would usually start with the Compass either with fabric or there's also a very nice fabric leatherette mix available in all markets basically. Here, however, the optional animals can seat, but usually the Trailhawk would also standard feature a premium fabric leatherette mix. Let's now get inside and of course a very easy entry to this compass and you basically have a comfortable seating position. Here the animal skin wrap will be a little bit tighter if it's available in your market and it will be in most markets. I always recommend the fabric seats also to keep it cooler in summer and warm in winter and it's also a little bit softer than from the cushion area for example. With 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 Still plenty of headroom left. Interior overview, once again here the soft touch. And then we have this typical styling of the Jeep which puts the infotainment system right here. And we also have some digital instruments today. So usually it would start 3.5 inch on the left and then the optional one here is 7 inch, however standard for the hybrid model. And on the right side you would have 5 inch, 7 inch and here 8.4 inch. 
However, once again, the PF does feature this. So this one here, the 4XE, automatically comes with a setup 7 inch left and 8.4 inch on the right. Soon more details to the screens. Once again, look at the steering wheel where you have then the cruise control here on the right, for example, and picking up the phone on the left. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, both available with the cable connection. Then in the lower part here, easy control of the volume, for example, still also some climate knobs, so rather straightforward this control unit. And then it gets really interesting because in the lower part we have the off-road driving modes, but also 4W Low and 4W Lock and the hill descent control. However, this is not working like, you know, with mechanical links because of this electric all-wheel drive. This is all done electronically now. And also you can pick the hybrid driving mode, like normal hybrid mode, electric when you want, really want predominantly rear-wheel drive with the all-electric, or e-save when you want to save some battery power for later. Infotainment system is probably one of the weakest points of this car, and least we do have the Apple CarPlay here. Most of the time you will probably just um, use this one here and um, yeah the Alpine sound system is quite okay but not that we would be very impressed by it yeah has some nice punch definitely to it so and um, when you go back then to the normal G menu you can use the hotkeys in the lower part but the GPS for example is um, I mean it's really really slow um, you know, like the like all the reaction times and so on. See, it's not really that responsive. Then the instruments, left side here the RPM meter for the ICE, right side the power meter then here for the electric drive or also when you're recuperating. In the middle part you have the digital instruments, digital speed, that's really helpful. Uh, but you can also, for example, check out the total range here, the electric range plus the um, ICE range and then you have a total range which is still quite decent overall then. As for the rear compartment, really interesting, you see it. This rear door almost opens 90 degrees. That's of course a very easy entry. And of course also if you want to install some child seats. You sit relatively high here in the rear. That means for kids it's really cool because they still have a good overview and don't feel too lost. However, the packaging here in the Compass is one of the best in the Jeep model lineup. So that's also what I like about this very model. It's not too long on the exterior, but already delivers you a lot of space on the interior so a lot of uh, leg room is left and headroom here although i'm not sitting too low still can put a hand over my head with one meter a6 or six foot one as for the trunk area well it's not such a compromise because you only lose about 20 liters of trunk capacity that's okay yeah it take, takes ages this electric head right the thing is that you lose almost 20 liters of fuel tank because of the plug-in hybrid and that's rather a range problem you have to even that out by a better fuel economy then. However, here the trunk is actually almost the same as for the normal Compass. Interesting that the electric tailgate button is here at the inside. That's quite nice because you don't have to reach up. You have Easter eggs here, like a logo at the inside part here and also here. So nice Easter eggs here, also at the back part of the vehicle. You can remove this cover here, of course. Then some measures for you, the width here of the trunk is a little bit less than a meter. The normal length, here is about 75 centimeters. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the new Jeep Compass 4XE, the plug-in hybrid. And of course, cool things first, you start all silent and it really does fit to the vehicle. So I mean, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have imagined that maybe like an electrified Jeep, but it's really cool. You have this upright seating position and especially when you, for example, start in the city, it's just relaxing to drive. You don't um, you know, annoy anyone with emissions or with um, exhaust sound or so. So it's really suitable for city driving. It also starts electrically when you're in the hybrid mode and you just keep it rather steady. If you really want to stress that electric driving or really want to be sure you're driving electric, then you can also switch to the electric mode. Then, um, you know, you, it's actually more ensured that it's all electric then. Um, then we also have the rear-wheel drive, so when we accelerate, then I also feel that the car is being pushed from the rear rather than being pulled from the front, which would be this normal front-wheel driven platform here. The typical ICE all-wheel drive models um, are working a little bit differently here than with the electric all-wheel drive. So in this hybrid mode, I can also have an electric all-wheel drive and we can also activate them with these off-road gauges. So because you might you know, want to be in an off-road situation and then you can still activate that. Of course, you cannot expect the same performance um, you know, as for off-road driving, but 
it still works. And we can also go to this e-safe mode. Then I could, for example, charge the battery because there's an electric, another electric motor here in the front, but it's not directly powering the wheels. It's more for the power generation then. So we can let the combustion engine run and still charge the battery for a later use. That's not efficient, but it might be necessary at some point when you are driving into an um, emission-free zone or something. This will be something which will be more prominent than in the future. So, and here, for example, when running downhill, I just go off the throttle and then we have some recuperation. Not as strong, but I can also activate this button I showed you earlier in the interior part. And then they have a stronger deceleration, a stronger recuperation. I also see these charging gauges. Still, it's not that strong. So um, you can hammer the brakes and then more recuperation is being done until you reach the point of maximum recuperation. And then the normal brakes are being applied. That's also one of the good things about the plug-in hybrids then. And I would probably leave the button here activated all the time because when you lift your foot off the throttle, then already a deceleration process is happening. And that's usually quite good because it's also a safety thing, you know? That's why I also prefer driving the electric vehicles with strong recuperation. You lift your foot off the throttle, you have some deceleration, and in the split second you switch from the accelerator pedal then to the brakes, for example, you already, you know, can reduce your speed a little bit, so why not? In this hybrid mode, we have basically on-demand power from both drivetrains and I can either leave it in the auto drive mode or I can also put it to sport in the sport mode here traction control is off yay and we go sporty all out here with the compass and you maybe already heard that in the sports mode also the combustion engine is being activated this sounds so much different here now you know and big contrast to the all silent drive and then we also have a stronger acceleration, for example. So uh, there's nothing right behind me. We can just like do like zero to 50. That's what we can do here. Oh, that's already it. So almost was, yeah, zero to 60. Always the digital instruments are lagging behind a little bit. So you see, especially with the electric drive, you have a lot of power from standstill. That's also difference to a pure combustion engine in the higher, um, speed areas there will be you no know, less effect as for that but definitely quite cool so you have some indeed decent acceleration power then with this vehicle and also when you accelerate right out, right out here you also feel that the electric drive is being pushing a little bit however it's um, it's a small engine here you also hear that so when you apply a lot of throttle you also feel yeah it's it's being stressed a little bit the small 1.3 engine but it will be okay when you apply it just some throttle here in the sports mode the rpms are turned up higher as well so usually i would leave it in the auto mode and the car is also a little bit more silent and you can relax a little bit more and as soon as you have these moments where you just roll a little bit for example then you see that the rpms of the combustion engine drop to zero and you're just driving in this, yeah, in this old electric drive. And you see also the power meter on the right. The steering wheel, by the way, doesn't give you too much feeling. So it feels a little bit dead. It is somewhat direct, um, but in a way, in a like arcade, ga arcade ga gaming style, but it doesn't give you the connection between driver, steering and road. So there's hardly any resistance at all. Noise insulation is actually quite good and here in the Jeep Compass it's also a little bit better than in the Jeep Renegade in the Fiat 500X which are sharing the platform. This car would also be built then in Italy, especially of course for the European market where more and more plug-in hybrids are being requested. Now we are at about 120 kilometers an hour and still driving all electric and I think the noise insulation is actually quite decent. So don't have to raise my voice that much and the car is also fairly stable here we do have the trailhawk version with the 17 inch wheels that makes it a little bit softer and more off-road ish um, the only thing is again you don't have the safest feeling because the connection here with the steering wheel is not the best but yeah you will survive and now to our conclusion for today with the jeep compass plug-in hybrid 
First of all, exterior-wise, I really like the blue accentuations they have there. So I think styling-wise, it's definitely a plus. And the compass here, short exterior dimension, but already a lot of space on the inside. That's one of the best things about this vehicle. The interior sophistication, we talked about that, could be a little bit better. The infotainment system should also be more modern probably two downsides of this vehicle but you also have some nice seating materials not today in this very vehicle but in generally available and the plug-in hybrid drivetrain is very interesting so driving it all electric is so much fun who would have expected that from a jeep a couple of years ago so i would recharge it as frequently as possible and then it also makes sense especially from uh, city driving and so on or maybe some changing topography where we can use the um, regenerative braking and so on then this car really makes sense when you have a lot you know high mileage and so on and you're driving motorway all the way all the way all the way all the time then it's not really the suitable drivetrain especially our friends in the us will just stick them with the 2.4 liter natural aspirator engine but here for europe purposes this will be the thing in the future the entry price is quite high but then again you get some tax benefits and so on that at the end of the day it can pay off i can just stress again driving it all electric is the most fun to go than here now with the compass so probably especially with this blue color the trailhawk version also still looks fancy and since there's no typical off-road transfer case and so on this then in this case is more a design thing with the trailhawk but why not why would you buy a jeep to have this off-road look as well so i hope you enjoyed our episode for today with thomas and also with aj give us your comments and see you next time